All right, howdy. Today we're going to be working on doing a bearing load and analyzing it with St. Venant's principle. So first of all, let's go ahead and start out by doing our bearing load. So in order to make a bearing load, we first of all have to split this uh, hole. We're going to do like a pin through that hole. So go to curves, split. We're going to click on the inner side of our, um, our hole there. And then for our normal plane, we'll choose the, uh, the front or the uh, top plane. This would be the top plane here. And when we do that, you'll notice it'll make a split. We'll split this hole into two surfaces on the inside, which we need to do so we can only apply the load on one half there. Next, we need to make a coordinate system to align our bearing load to. So first of all, we need to make a point to put the coordinate system on. If we select this arc right here, not the surface, but the arc, and then we hit check mark, it'll make a point right in the middle. And if you notice, it's not actually in the middle of the uh, hole but it's on the surface. So next we need to add the coordinate system. So we're gonna go reference geometry, coordinate system, and it's gonna just deep by default put it on that point. And the only thing we need to make sure of is that the Y is pointing in the direction of our load. And it doesn't really matter that much, but it just makes it easier in the next step. Um, if you wanted this load to be pointing in a different direction, when you made that split line, instead of choosing the top plane as your reference plane, you could make a you know, another plane at like a 40 degree angle or whatever angle you wanted to put that load at. And so that would let you make a load going off in some wonky direction. So now we have our coordinate system made. So let's go ahead and save. And let's go ahead and do a study. So we come over here to simulation, new study. It's going to be a static study. So now we're going to uh, go ahead and do a fixture here. Just really simple fixed geometry on the bottom of our part. So once we do that, now we need to apply our bearing load. So we're going to go over here to external loads, bearing load. And we're going to do the inside of this. And our coordinate system is going to be the coordinate system we made. Now we want it to be in the y direction and we're going to do a thousand newtons. Now if we had made our coordinate system in the wrong direction, these arrows would be pointing down instead of up, but we could fix that just by doing reverse direction. But we don't need to do that and it works best this way. So we have our bearing load now. It's set up with a sinusoidal distribution and we can just go ahead and hit OK. So we have our fixture, we've got our load. This is a pretty simple model, so now we just need to mesh and run. So I'm going to go ahead and mesh this part. I hate this. So why can't, why isn't this working? There we go. So we're going to go ahead and just make a simple mesh here. It takes me a second because I'm recording video. And now we're going to go ahead and run this. All right, and there's our results. So now to use St. Venance, we need to actually make a new plot that has our factor of safety. So define factor of safety plot. We're going to come over here, just use automatic one multiplication factor. But what we want to do is we want to use areas below factor of safety. And I'm going to pick 100 because I did this earlier, and 100 worked well for the example. So we're going to hit OK. Now we have our plot. Red is where things are failing, and blue is where things aren't failing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come over here, and we're going to do section clipping. And we're going to go about halfway through our part. You can actually drag that slider in and out. It's not working on my computer, but you can drag it in and out, figure out where the uh, red goes the deepest. And if you'll notice, we're about halfway through our part. We just have a section cut out on that and we're going to hit check mark. Now if we normal to this, my computer unfreezes here. So we'll normal to that and we can see that this red, wow it's really freezing a lot. So this red doesn't actually go all the way through. And St. Venance states that due to the element of finite element analysis, if we have one cell that fails, the whole part necessarily isn't going to fail. We can have about 10 to 15 percent of yield inside of our part before we actually have to call it yielded. And that only works with a factor of safety though. So if you're using a factor of safety of like four, 
and you have this much below your factor of safety, it's still acceptable to say that's a factor of safety of four. So that makes design a lot easier. Um, I think SolidWorks has completely, there it goes. Um, it hasn't frozen up completely, but it's really running slowly. So there's one more thing I wanted to show. If we go back to our stress plot here, and we go to this up here called Design Insight, and click on that. What that's gonna do is that's gonna show us where our loads are concentrated. So if we go ahead and we drag this down, we can see that there's a lot of excess material in this part. We could pretty safely eliminate, you know, a line going like this and cut down our part's weight by maybe a third. Um, so you can kind of look through there and you can see how the part gets loaded. And that really helps out if you want to reduce your part size, its mass, or its cost, you can come through and analyze how to take extra material off. Anyway, that's two things that I wanted to kind of go through really quick. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. All right, see you later.